Hello, Sim here. Welcome to another Sims Thoughts video. So, the multiplayer reveal for Ghosts was last night. Graphically, it's looking pretty good, and there's been some new things brought to the table. So, we now know November the 5th is the release date for the current gen. Gamescon is just a few days away, so I expect to find out the console release dates then, and thus get the confirmed dates for Ghosts for the PS4 and Xbox One. We also now know that DLC can be transferred, but one way only, to the next gen console within the same family. In other words, 360 to Xbox One, but not 360 to PS4 for example. The presentation slides showed one way arrows very, very clearly. And this only works if you buy the season pass. Similarly, your player transfers across generations via Elite. But again, only one way, so PS3 to PS4. No mention of it going backwards. And Elite, of course, continues to be supported across tablets and phones. So, what about some good news? No more death streaks. Thank God for that. As they finally learned. So, apart from souped up graphics, what else do we know? Your gaming avatar will automatically call things out when they spot enemies or kill streaks. Useful for when playing with randoms who don't use mics, but could it become annoying? I guess you will only hear callouts from players near your location. Your gaming avatar will also do automatic leaning using contextual environment information. So it's going to be interesting to see how that works in practice, as it needs to be much better than that which is used in typical third person shooters. The auto sliding for prone shots etc looks pretty cool. Strike packages are back! You got Assault, Support and Specialist. I really enjoyed Specialist so I'm glad to see that back. Support has had its killstreaks effectively nerfed, so that they're more support like, i.e. The lethals have been reduced, so that's good news. Kill streaks in general are more ground based as well, so there's a lot less in the air. Your UAV is now known as a SATCOM and it's placed on the ground, so you've got to find a good place to hide it. We also now have destructible environments, pinching something from Battlefield because we've had it for yonks in Battlefield. And now we of course we have dynamic map events. So we're used to 10 class setups, but these are now being replaced by soldiers, so you can customise their appearance. Something we can currently do again in Battlefield, but probably not to the same extent Ghost is going to be now offering, because it's talking about like 20,000 variations. As you earn XP, you get squad points, and that allows you to unlock equipment in any order you want. So you don't have to just wait for level 55 or whatever to get to the best gun. You can unlock it in whatever order you want, so that's good as well. So, they've kept the 10 point system sort of in mind. They've introduced a variant on it, which got introduced in Black Ops 2. Attachments and killstreaks are free. But, your primary and secondary weapon, lethals and tacticals are not free. We've got 35 perks, yes, 7 categories. So you've got 5 per category, and these categories are Speed, Handling, Stealth, Awareness, Resistance, Equipment and Elite. And of course we're going to find out more about that over due time. Got to keep all that hype going. So, the perks in each category can have a value between 1 and 5, and you have a total of 8 points to spend by default. Although it appears you can have a couple more by not using a lethal and tactical. And you get to prestige each soldier individually, and just the once. But you get to keep all your unlocks. So once you've prestiged each soldier, you're going to be at max prestige. So what about game types? From the main trailer we can see we've got 12 in the standard multiplayer mode. Some of them we're familiar with, others we are not. So what do we know? We know we have free for all, team deathmatch, search and destroy, Domination, Kill Confirmed, Search and Rescue, Grind, Blitz, Cranked, Infected, Hunted and Safeguard. So we've got Search and Rescue and that's like S&D but if you collect the tag from a fallen teammate you get to revive them. However if the enemy collects that tag your buddy is out for the count for the rest of that round. Cranked is like TDM but once you get a kill you better kill somebody in the next 30 seconds or you're going to blow up. This means no more camping. Excellent for those of us who like to rush. I can see myself playing a lot of this. We also have a new weapon category, Marksman Rifles. These bridge the gap between Assault and Sniper Rifles. We've also got a new mode called Squads. This is your 10 soldiers that you've used per prestige type thing that we talked about earlier that you can use to play against AI or other gamers squads. And you can play it in solo or co-op mode as well. I'm thinking of it as a souped up version of combat training. Very souped up. The more exciting news for me that I think is going to make a real difference in the multiplayer world is the improved clan support. You can now manage your clan within the game and you can still do it via Elite apps of course, 
And also, when you're playing with your clan mates, you get to earn XP to level up your clan. You don't have to play in signed up events like we had to do in MW3. However, you can also play clan versus clan for those clans that are the same or similar level as yours. This is known as Clan Wars. I think of it as an upgraded league play for clans, with a two week rotation rather than once a month, but where you get to fight over territories. And your clan can comprise of members across both the current and next gen platforms, but for the same family of consoles, so think PS3 and PS4, or Xbox 360 and Xbox One. So it's all looking pretty cool, but there's a big question on everyone's mind, and that is dedicated servers. Yes or no, you can have the best graphics in the world, but if you can't kill an enemy due to lag compensation etc, then the game's going to die instantly. But it's almost died in Black Ops 2, and if they get this wrong, COD is dead forever. So at the moment I suspect P2P, that's peer to peer, as I've stated in my previous videos. If they get it right, then great, if they get it wrong, oh dear. But I really do hope they get it right because I think they've been listening. So, I also do not expect players to be able to play against others on old gen versus new gen. There's a few reasons for this, and it's quite technical in some senses. The main reason is due to low level compatibility on the way data is encoded at the binary level. It is known as Big Endian versus Little Endian. The PS3 and Xbox 360 are both Big Endian. The PC and thus the next gen consoles are Little Endian. Although it's technically possible to convert between the Endians, that has a performance impact. Also you have to take into account that the consoles are on different gaming networks. And finally, if I take this sceptical view, they'll want to sell the game twice for those who decide to upgrade at a later point. So that's my thoughts so far. If you found the video informative, please leave a like. Do feel free to leave a comment. So are you excited for ghosts? And to stay in touch with my latest vids, subscribe. Until next time, this has been Sim. Thank you.